Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday to you, Josh. It's severe weather. I'm a meteorologist in the Raleigh area. And before I get into this video, uh, we'll tell you all I'm going to pretty much spend most of that time talking about the future of Hurricane Lee. And because a lot of you are asking the same questions, I'm going to answer them right now. This is not going to hit Florida. It's not going to hit the Carolinas. It's not directly going to hit New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and pull a Sandy. Instead, the question mark is, after it makes the right term, what speed is it going to come into potentially eastern New England and Atlantic Canada, or will it try to make a hard right and just scrape Nova Scotia and go out to sea? And I'm going to show you guys what we are looking at. So again, uh, before I get the 100 questions about it, just listen to this part, and then I'm going to show you everything. Uh, if you are one of those people that doesn't want to see the details, uh, it is not going to hit the southeast. It's expected to make a hard right here later next week. And the storm has weakened some, but looks like it's about to rebound here over the next few days. Let's take a look at what we're looking at here. Hurricane Lee has weakened uh, down just to a Category 3 at this point. It was a Category 5 this time yesterday morning, but wind shear actually ended up being stronger than what was expected and predicted by all of our forecast models. I think everybody uh, saw the demise start yesterday, but that doesn't mean Lee is not a strong storm. It's just not nearly as extreme as it was this time yesterday. Now, there are some signs that things are going to rebound here today, tonight, and especially tomorrow. And I'm predicting that Lee is going to get very close to, if not surpass, again, Category 5 strength as it continues over warm water and wind shear begins to weaken again. So the other thing we're watching is that the forward speed is going to slow down here as we get towards the middle of next week. And the system's going to not quite stall, but just more drift off to the west and west-northwest. Uh, does not look like it's going to accelerate after that westward towards Florida. Instead, we're going to see a right turn. And the big question mark is how quickly does that, after that turn happens, does the system accelerate north? There are signs that it could still impact uh, New England here. It could maybe try to bend back a little bit left of north, or it could make a turn to the right. My prediction right now is in between them with the storm coming up through Nova Scotia and a secondary landfall over eastern New Brunswick and then heading into Prince Edward Island. At that point, speeding up and weakening. Um, you can see my two is closer to the one than the three. Uh, that doesn't mean the storm's not going to speed up. It just means I think it'll stay a three a little bit longer here until it gets past Bermuda before going back down to a two. Uh, so that's my forecast. So I'm going to go into more detail here. First, I'm going to show you all just a widescreen view of everything. Here's Hurricane Lee, major Category 3 storm. It is starting to grow again. We're starting to see some signs of organization, although not a very quick ramp up like we saw two days ago. We have Tropical Storm Margo, which is beginning to grow. It's dealing with some wind shear, but it is growing again and predicted to become a hurricane here next week. And then we're going to have to keep an eye on Africa. There may be an additional system that forms in about another nine to 10 days. In the Pacific, all we have right now is the remains of Hurricane Hova. I won't say remains, but a much weaker system, which has lost a lot of its central convection and is quickly weakening over cooler waters. And uh, for the most part, the Western Pacific is pretty quiet. So really the only systems to watch at this point, aside from Hova, are Lee and Margo. And then maybe down the road, we could be talking about Nigel as well, but let's not get too far into the weeds at this point. Here's a, a, large, a larger scale view of everything. And I'm going to bring my pen out so that you guys can see what we're tracking here. Let me change this color and make it, uh, we'll try to do a brighter pink here. <laughs> Not my favorite color, but it's easy to see on the map. But here is Hurricane Lee. You can see still a very formidable storm. Um, it has started to grow in intensity, but does not have a cleared out eye at this point. Some wind shear has affected it. Um, you see behind it, we have Tropical Storm Margo, and that system is already heading more in a northwesterly direction. So it is not likely to be a threat to land, just a fish storm. And we still do have a low pressure circulation here that was once Edalia that is heading into the higher latitudes and will continue to weaken. A bit of an upper level low spinning here to the north, but a large area of high pressure building in north of these two storms. And that is going to shift westward somewhat until uh, later next week, we have a trough across the Western US, which will push that high back out to sea. So the high that's here now is eventually going to get shoved out. That's going to open up a lane for the system to make a right turn. But it's going to head this direction. And with the five-day forecast, it looks like a threat to the southeast. But what you don't see is after five days, a hard right turn is coming. And right now, all the models agree that that's going to be not right near Bermuda, but to the west of Bermuda and well east of the eastern seaboard. After that, the trough could try to cut off and pull this a little bit more northwest, 
or it may be slower to do that, pull it more towards Nova Scotia. And there's even some solutions that try to make a right turn and miss land altogether. But nonetheless, a big storm that's going to grow and cause some issues as we get down the road. Here's a look at the infrared. Again, you see Hurricane Lee at this point um, holding its own, not really strengthening yet, but certainly a big storm. And then we start to see a little bit better organization here with Tropical Storm Margo. And then we see another wave poised to come off of Africa here in a couple of days that does need to be watched. Here's a Central Atlantic. And Hurricane Lee has been getting some wind shear over the last 24 hours out of the south and west. That shear looks like it's starting to let up some. Uh, Lee itself is actually producing outflow clouds, which are shearing Margo. So Lee is taken over here, and Margo is going to struggle in its coattails. Uh, but we will see after Lee pulls away and Margo turns more northwesterly, some development of Margo as well. And then behind Margo, we have another wave over the Cape Verdes, which I don't think will develop. Another wave coming off of Africa, which probably won't develop. And then a bigger wave behind it um, that does need to be watched for some development. But it's got to wait until the other two systems get out of the way first. So this one, some models take in this direction here and then start to turn in this direction. And that could be Nigel down the road. But it's still at least eight or nine days from any kind of tropical formation. Here's a look at Hurricane Lee. Obviously, yesterday the system looked a lot more intense. It had a big eye that was contracting, and then wind shear began to hit the storm, and it weakened significantly. You can kind of see these clouds down in here. Let me get my pen out and show you all. Um, but yeah, um, we do have still have some clouds coming in in this direction that are kind of limiting Lee from really growing more on the westerly side of the circulation. You see in the last couple of frames, though, there is an eye that is starting to emerge in here again. So the weakening phase appears to have halted, and I think we're going to start seeing some strengthening again as the system moves away. Uh, the visible, or not away, but moves westerly. The visible shows we still have a cloud-filled eye at this point, um, but we are starting to see some growth on the western side, some better outflow to the south and west. So again, the uh, wind shear that has been affecting Lee over the last 24 hours is starting to let up. Here's a wind shear map, and I will try to keep this simple for you all here. This is Hurricane Lee right here. Uh, the reds indicate hostile wind shear. That's wind shear above 25 knots. The yellow is marginal. The green is low wind shear. Now, the system uh, was predicted to stay in this area of low wind shear, but some southwesterly wind shear kind of got in the middle here and forced the system to weaken some. Now, it looks like, let me clear this out here, um, as Lee moves more in this direction, it's going to head back into this area of green here by tonight and tomorrow. So the wind shear is going to lessen and waters are still very warm. So this system has a, a great chance at reorganizing and re-strengthening. It's not going to happen in a flash like it did here two days ago, but it will gradually happen. Um, this is recon data from last night. And this number here is the surface pressure. The pressure was down into the 920s. It rose almost 40 millibars, which obviously shows strength uh, weakening here. And um, the pressure was up to as high as 966 millibars, which is almost down the category two strength. Uh, and the winds as a result did weaken some. Now this data is from 125 Eastern last night. Uh, another plane is heading through there now, and you can see the pressure was 966, and now it has dropped 10 millibars back to 956. So the weakening phase, appears to be over and you can start to see here on the eastern side of the storm we do have some stronger winds showing up again um, that are at least of category three intensity so it's done weakening according to this data and i think we are going to start to see some strengthening again um, let me get my pen back out sorry i forgot to clear that off for you guys um, but you can see here the flight level winds um, during this penetration were only about 105 knots which is 125 miles per hour Surface winds at about 100 knots, which is 115 miles per hour. So the system is a Category 3 hurricane, and the Hurricane Center is actually projecting it may get down to 2, but I don't know if it, that's really going to happen. I think we're done with the weakening trend. But you can see the pressure here in the 950s again. So it's a strong hurricane, but it's not an extremely powerful Category 4 or 5 just yet. I think it could get there again. Another thing I wanted to point out to you guys here is the temperature and dew point inside the eye of the storm. Uh, yesterday, the temperature was up here, almost up to 30 Celsius. Now it's down into the lower 20s. The dew point yesterday was in the single digit Celsius. That's 30s Fahrenheit. Today, the dew point is in the teens. So um, there's definitely not a lot of drying in the eye at this point. Um, it's, it's starting to warm, but it's not drying out and clearing out just yet. So the system is not rapidly intensifying, but it is starting to 
ramp back up slowly here. And I think today that's kind of what our trend looks like, where we see some intensification. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. They're predicting that it'll go down to two and then back up to three here um, by Monday morning and then up to category four by Monday afternoon and Monday night. I do think that they're starting off a little bit low here, and I think the system's going to re-strengthen here a little bit more quickly as we're starting to see with that recon plane that's in there this morning. But you can see this hashed line area here. Let me uh, circle that for you guys. See kind of the hashed area in here? That is an area of high ocean heat content. Um, this is from Tomer Berg, and um, that area has ocean heat content above 100. So as wind shear relaxes and this system goes back over this very warm water, uh, it's very possible it could try to rapidly intensify and go through just one more phase before it starts getting into cooler waters. Another thing I'll show you guys is that the forward speed does slow down here after Monday. We start to reach kind of a weakness in the ridge of high pressure that leads to some slower steering. And it's actually going to bend back to the west. If, if this were not on the map here, you would think it's going to be slowing down and heading this direction. However, that's not going to be the case. Um, as the high pressure area slows down, we'll have a trough moving in from the west later next week. And that is going to induce a right turn and start to speed the system back up into some cooler water. So it will weaken at that point west of Bermuda towards next Thursday and Friday. But the bigger question mark is going to be how quickly that turn occurs. Here's a look at the intensification forecast, and you can see models show some incredibly different solutions. The UK Met, not really a reliable tropical model, but you can see some models show a brief amount of weakening for 12 hours and then strengthening. I don't think that weakening is really happening based on that surface pressure reading and the fact that the winds are starting to come back up. I think we're kind of steady state now, and I think we're getting back to category four here by tomorrow. And you can see there's some models that go back up to category five in 48 hours that would be monday morning as you see that that water content does start climbing again i think we can certainly see that um intensification but it's not going to be rapid like it was here two days ago the ship's model shows that there is a 10 percent chance that in the next 24 hours uh, we see intensification by 25 knots that would bring it up from a category three to a high four or a low five after that we don't see the kind of intensification that's going to rival what we saw here on Thursday, which is good news, but we still see some intensification. You can see that uh, there is potential here as wind shear drops below 20 knots down into the 5 to 10 knot range here later tomorrow into Monday. Very favorable conditions. Water temperatures at 30 Celsius. It's 86 Fahrenheit and uh, humidity levels at 55 to 60 percent heat content around 100. So all of those variables are very favorable for this storm to re-strengthen again. How high could it get? Well, according to this, in 48 hours, um, perhaps 170 knots, which would be 200 miles per hour. Do I think it gets that strong? I mean, I've been I've been stronger than the Hurricane Center on the last few storms, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think maybe 180 to 190 would be our max. And then you can see things do drop off here as we lose some of that heat content. We lose some of the humidity. We start seeing an increase in wind shear and water temperatures cool as we get to the west of Bermuda. So it's not going to be a Category 5 by the time it passes west of Bermuda. It's probably going to be a three and weakening at that point. Uh, forecast tracks all show that the system will slow down and start to bend back to the left and go on more of a westerly track. That doesn't happen, though, until Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. But we do have some uncertainty that grows after that. And the biggest uncertainty isn't necessarily if it's going to make a right turn. That uncertainty is going to be at what speed does it do that? Because there's different model solutions on our trough moving in from the west. We could see that turn happening as soon as Wednesday or Thursday. We could also see it linger until Friday or early on Saturday. So that's really the biggest question mark at this point is where does that turn happen? And does it put Bermuda in the stronger part of this storm? Now, the ensemble has trended a bit more to the right, uh, which is obviously what we like to see here on the east coast of the U.S., but it certainly does not put these folks off the hook. It's just a trend in the last couple of runs that the uh, severe turn is going to be a little bit more severe and a little bit sooner. Um, and certainly that is not what you want to see in Bermuda, but it is what you want to see here on the East Coast. But we still have several models, including the deterministic GFS that bring this system over Nova Scotia into the Bay of Fundy. And as it's growing, it's going to be impacting Eastern Maine and maybe Cape Cod and maybe down East Maine, not just down East Maine, but lower Maine here as well. Certainly Nova Scotia in the path, maybe Newfoundland as well and Prince Edward Island. A few ensembles do make this turn a lot later. But these are outliers at this point. I don't think North Carolina up to New Jersey has to really stress about this. What you will see is that there are some ensembles here that try to bend it back a little bit west of north, right at 70 west. 
if that happens, then obviously Long Island and Southern Connecticut and um, Rhode Island and Southeastern Mass need to be on the alert for this, just in case uh, this bend starts to come back to the west some. You can see the GFS even hints there's a bit of a bend west. Why would it do that? Well, very easily we would see a trough of low pressure start to dig the storm and pull it a little bit more west of north until it gets kicked out. Now the European has flipped and the operational and the ensemble means show that a harder right turn is gonna happen and we're gonna see a track closer to Bermuda and a turn away from land, maybe towards Newfoundland. But there is such a big spread here, I would not count on that happening. There's still model ensemble members that do show Maine, New Brunswick and Western Nova Scotia in the path, some that bring it over Eastern and Central Nova Scotia and quite a few that bring it over Newfoundland. The good news is that I think it will be a weaker system at that point. Here's a look at the ensemble spread and this is what I want you all to focus on. You can see really good agreement here through Monday um, there are some, some ensembles a little bit quicker than others, but they all show that trend back to the West. Now, as we get into next Tuesday and Wednesday, we see some divergence in the solutions. And now our spread is growing and our amount of confidence starts to lower at this point. Um, we do have outliers close to the Bahamas. We already have some making the right turn, but we've got some bigger differences coming in the forward speed as some of the ensembles have it east of the Bahamas here. By the time we get to Thursday night, Friday morning, others already have it accelerating up the East Coast, uh, with the average being south and west of Bermuda here on Friday morning. So during the day Friday, we may have the system going right past Bermuda, but we still have some members that are still slower with it, showing it hanging out here over warmer water. And we've got some ensembles that are already accelerating things into eastern New England, which <laughs> I really hope doesn't happen because the faster it moves, the slower it's going to be to, to weaken at that point. So we still have some uncertainty here on all of our ensembles, even though we've got a pretty good agreement here that the ellipse has us staying off the East Coast and aimed more at Nova Scotia. Here's a look at the, at the ensemble track forecast. You can see the spread starts growing here once we get to about 72 hours, that's to be expected, versus what you would expect. That's actually a, a higher level of confidence. Typically we have low confidence here at 120, mile, uh, 120 hours, and this is showing moderate confidence and less spread than usual. So that is at least some relief in that we're not as uncertain as we could be, but there still is a level of uncertainty. Water temperatures here around 30 Celsius for the next few days, then the system gets into cooler waters by Wednesday night and Thursday. It'll be in much cooler water by Friday morning and then into briefly an area of warmer water before it hits much cooler water off New England. These water temperatures near Maine are actually a little bit below average. Uh, but the system will be accelerating and that's only going to have a minor effect on the rate of weakening at this point you're probably asking yourself when's the gulf and the caribbean going to get back in on the action look how warm the water is well right now because we're in an el nino because we see a trough moving into the east multiple times here we don't have a big ridge building over the east coast we don't have an avenue for storms to get into the gulf and go west or northwest towards louisiana or texas or mississippi that track's just not there this season Instead, we see the track over the central and, and western Atlantic, even the eastern Atlantic. So this area here is getting all the action. This area, for the most part, is missing out. Of course, Idalia was an exception to that, and so was Harold. Um, here's a look at the GFS upper level pattern. Here's our ridge of high pressure building in. It's actually going to strengthen here over the next few days, and that is going to certainly um, guide how the system tracks to the west-northwest. You do see a big trough over the Great Lakes here, but that trough actually cuts off and slows down and moves into Atlantic Canada here by the time we get to Thursday and Friday. We also have a very strong area of high pressure building between Lee and Margo. So you see kind of these two ominous looking eyes and then kind of a funky nose and a smiley face. I know I'm making fun of it, but you do see, um, you do see the ridge amplifying itself here. Um, how strong that ridge gets is gonna determine where this trough ends up. And you can see there's another piece of energy coming through the plains here on Thursday and Friday and um, how south and east this uh, ends up digging will influence whether or not the system tries to turn back west to north or it's just going to kick it out not harmlessly but away from the u.s towards atlantic canada and you can see it does the same thing with margo and oh by the way here's our next system which once margo and lee leave the area high pressure rebuilds and we do have potentially another hurricane coming here um, the following week here nigel would be the next name but that is so far off we don't really know where it's going to end up going the gfs has been showing a, a similar track to Lee, but turning away a little bit sooner near Bermuda. Here's the operational GFS. You can see um, Margo's uh, expected to grow and strengthen into a hurricane next week. Lee will re-strengthen here 
and high pressure builds in between the two. So they're not really going to influence each other directly. And then after Lee comes into Atlantic Canada on Saturday, uh, Margo starts to go more northwest and then comes around this high. And then the next wave starts developing next weekend into what should be Nigel. That one, though, because there's a weaker ridge and a stronger trough here, does not look like a threat to the U.S. at that point. Uh, but, oh boy, the GFS is bullish on that as well and shows something just like Lee here, just a little farther north and east by the 23rd. Here's a look at the European, which doesn't go out that far. You can see the European strengthens our system here again, strengthens both of them into pretty formidable hurricanes. But the European is faster with the trough moving into the east. It's slower with Lee coming up here. And as a result, uh, it's got Lee now actually turning away. A couple days ago, it had Lee coming up through Maine and New Brunswick. Now it's got it turning away. And that would be the best case scenario. And oh, by the way, it does not develop the next system, at least in the next 10 days. Now, the Canadian is one that I think has been a little bit more consistent. It is not one I typically favor for tropical solutions because it's never strong enough with these storms. But I will say it's been doing a pretty decent job in picking out their tracks. So as we watch Lee here, we can see it comes by west of Bermuda Friday afternoon and then accelerates more off to the north. And then here's the bend. You see this low pressure system kind of influences back to the west. But the gem, the Canadian model, is slower than the other two. It's actually not going to impact Atlantic Canada until next Sunday, whereas the other models have it coming in on Saturday. So that's what we're watching. This has landfall just east of Halifax Sunday afternoon. And then here comes our next system. This would be Nigel. Here, of course, is Margo. And we have to keep an eye on that one as well. Here is the tropical model I want to show you guys. And real quick here, um, we have obviously pressures have come up into the 950s. This tropical model, though, shows strengthening very significantly here, especially this afternoon and tonight, back into the 930s. It could end up being a little bit too aggressive, but wind shear is letting up, so we may start to see a pretty significant strengthening phase again later today, and especially tonight, back into the 920s. That would be strong Category 4, and then by tomorrow afternoon and night, maybe back up to Category 5 again, based on this pressure and wind forecast. This would be a similar intensity as to what we had uh, very early in the day on Friday before that weakening started, and this would be very early on Monday. So uh, we're, we're coming right back up the roller coaster after a big dive down. Um, we do see the pressures do come up slowly here Monday and Tuesday. Our speed slows down, and then we start having some wind shear and some weakening Tuesday afternoon and Tuesday night. And here is Wednesday, and we're back up to category or back down to category three and maybe even category two by the time we get to Thursday, still to the south and west of Bermuda at that point. Real quick, here's a look at Margo. You see the wind shear out of the west. It's keeping things disorganized and very east heavy. I think that will let up in a couple of days. Uh, but the system is poised to strengthen, even though it's going to struggle with wind shear. And here is our, our forecast intensifying it to a hurricane here by Monday night or Tuesday morning. And then a bit of a bend back into cooler waters after that. Some models show Category 2. They no longer show Category 3. I think Category 2 seems fine for a forecast. Um, but there is some chance that there could still be some significant intensification before we lose that higher heat content here by next Tuesday and Wednesday. Here's the model forecast tracks. And the ensembles are starting to shift a little bit more to the right, which is good news. Um, and I think that may be because Lee is influencing it more than it was in future forecasts. But there's still quite a bit of spread here. Um, the good news is that this will not be a strong storm in the higher latitudes. It may be a Category 1 or even a tropical storm by the time it gets up into here. And finally, this is a look at HOVA. You can see it's losing its convection and down to tropical storm strength at this point. No threat to land should continue to quickly weaken into a depression by later tomorrow and a remnant low by Monday and Tuesday of next week. We did have a lot of severe weather yesterday in parts of the Northeast again, parts of Virginia, even here in Raleigh, we had a bit of severe weather. Uh, we also finally saw storms in Texas, Louisiana, and the Arklatex. Today, things will not be quite as active, but I do think we could still have some severe weather this afternoon, mainly strong winds, also some hail. Anywhere from Georgia and South Carolina up into western New England, we do have a flood threat here as this system is slow moving. More storms in the forecast in Houston and San Antonio. We could certainly use this rain. And a, a cold front finally moving down into Dallas, Shreveport, Louisiana. We're finally cooling off after an extreme couple of months of nasty heat. Parts of the West and Plains will also have a marginal risk, but we're not looking at a widespread event. And tomorrow we start seeing those chances for severe storms continue to lower. Um, and then by the time we get to Monday, we just have general areas of storms. We may see a marginal risk in here, but it's not looking too active at this point. 
Hey, y'all, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. I will continue to do pretty much daily forecasts here. I usually take Sundays off. We'll have to see what happens with Lee. If he strengthens quickly tonight, I'll probably do an extra video tomorrow and as well as Monday. I do have a membership channel as well. Uh, it is $9.99 a month if you want to support me. Oh, there goes my shirt. Um, you're very, what, very much welcome to if you feel led to, no pressure, but people who are supporters get extra content. They get faster responses. And um, I just like having more of a community that can grow and talk about weather with each other. So I thank you for your time and I give all the glory to God who has called me to do this. He's given me the gift of being a meteorologist and I seek him as a result. Matthew 6, 33 to 34, King James Version says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh, in order for us to be to just have the glory of God, we need to be obedient. We need to repent. We need to turn to God. I didn't do that for the first 30 years of my life. I worried about things. I worried about pleasing people. The last thing on my mind was believing in God or a higher power. I just didn't see it. But you know, God works in mysterious ways. And one day I came to came to a realization that I couldn't do it alone anymore. I found people that I could associate with that were believers. Um, they showed me the joy in their lives. And as a result, I found ways and ways to stop worrying so much and to just turn it all over to God and say, God, I can't do this anymore. I just need you. Um, you know, we all know one day that Jesus is coming, whether or not we choose to believe that, but he is coming. And we don't know when that's going to be. Uh, it could happen now. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen any day. But either way, we need to realize that our times on earth here are relatively small. Many of us only live 60 to 80 years, maybe 90 years, if we're, if we're blessed to live a little bit longer. Um, we can't worry about when the day comes um, that we're no longer going to be living here on earth. But we can put those worries to bed if we choose to live eternally in the kingdom of God and to seek God first and to seek Jesus Christ, our Savior. So I wanted to share that with you because that is the good news. No matter what we talk about with the weather, there's always good news out there. And I just encourage you to be like I was if you're a struggling person and just realizing that there is there is a very much a huge reason you are here on earth. You've been called to do important things, to serve us all, to serve God, whether or not you believe in him. I don't judge you either way. I'm not calling you to the altar. I'm just saying, look, there's a reason for everything. And I just want to encourage you. So if you have any prayer requests, I would love to pray with you, for you, or over you. Please feel free to list those for me. And I hope you all have a blessed Saturday. Enjoy your weekend. Catch you soon. Take care.